Okay, I thought I would record another podcast uh, showing how to deal with a different type of boundary data. Um, uh, this is kind of, I guess, in the middle level of, level of difficulty. Um, it's not as uh, awkward as the um, uh, example where we had to manually trace the boundaries from disconnected line strings without external boundaries. Um, but the case we're looking at is uh, that of Bayern. Um, and as an example, these, this data was divided up into different regions, which I then kind of unified together at the end, merged together at the end. Um, so I'm going to take a look just at Oberbayern, which is one of the regions of Bayern. So opening that shapefile that we were supplied with that, um, this is line string data. I'll just zoom to that layer to get a reasonable view of it. Uh, that's still quite difficult to see, so I'm going to make the lines a bit darker and thicker. Um, if we can do that in here. Okay, um, so uh, I know from looking at the map of uh, on Wikipedia of what these uh, areas should look like that this is uh, looks basically reasonable. And if I use the identify tool, this one here, uh, to click on various of these features, I can see that they are um, uh, they do look like they uh, describe. Um, they're basically lines that go all the way around the boundaries. For each of these regions, uh, which is hopefully what we'd want. Uh, you can also see when I'm clicking on identify, you can see in the left here that they actually have various IDs and so on. Um, the method we're going to use wasn't going to actually preserve these, um, but uh, in other cases um, this is very important that you have good IDs there and saves a lot of time because you don't have to add them manually. Uh, so as I say, we'll, we'll lose them in what we're going to do here, but um, in other instances that's quite useful. Um, so the tool we're going to use here, because these look like pretty good uh, complete boundaries, is uh, Polygonize. Uh, this is from the Processing Toolbox. If that's not open, you can get to that through Processing Toolbox. Um, it's in my recently used algorithms here. Uh, but just to point out, if you do just search for it in there, there are actually two Polygonizes, um, and you want the one which is under uh, Vector Geometry Tools. Um, so. If I double click on that, it uh, gives me a variety of options. The input layer it's selected is the right one, so that's OK. Um, there's an option to keep the table structure of the line layer. Um, so what this would do is to keep the fields which were defined on the original lines. If you remember, there are various IDs that were defined um, for each of those features. Um, it won't, you know, it won't know how to map the IDs from the lines to the polygons this will create. But it's sometimes useful to have the fields still there if you want to um, put them back. Uh, I'm not going to bother about that here because we're going to uh, do a separate um, screencast explaining how to add IDs. Anyway, if I run this. Uh, we get uh, a new layer, polygon some lines as a result, uh, and uh, again a quick glance, that looks like it's pretty good, there are no non-green areas in there for a start. If I reorder these layers so that the original lines are on top, and click the visibility of that on and off, uh, we can see that it does look like there are polygons over each of them. And another quick kind of by eye check, if we do select feature, and click on each of... oh, it's not selecting them because I haven't... Uh, I need to select polygons and lines as the active layer in the layer panel there. And click on each of those. Um, they basically look pretty good. However, this is quite a approximate way of seeing what's been generated. Um, so what I'm going to do to do a slightly more rigorous examination of this data is to use the attribute table. Um, which lists all the features in this layer. I'm going to hide the uh, original lines for a bit. We might need them later to refer to, but um, at the moment they're just kind of getting in the way. Um, so if I open the attribute table, this I think is a potentially rather confusing dialogue. Um, in, so I'll just explain a little bit about what's going on here. In the left hand pane, you have a list of all the features in the area. Uh, so basically, um, each polygon within the layer is a, a feature. Um, and uh, what it lists here is the, if you like, the, the name or the preview of each 
polygon is one of the values uh, that it contains. So each of these features, after polygonize, it only has an area and a perimeter value, which is something that um, algorithm adds. As I said, if we selected that preserved table structure thing, we would have various other IDs here, but with null values. Um, and so this list in the left can be very helpful. Um, at the moment, it's showing area, but you can change the column preview to show, say, perimeter if you want. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is um, use display area and then use the sort by preview expression option um, so that we can see all the generated polygons in uh, order of area from the very tiny ones to much larger ones. Now, uh, as you can see, there's a lot more than the polygons we can see by eye on the screen there, and most of them have a very small area. Um, if we go to, say, uh, one of the ones which is about, uh, well, I, I happen to know that this one is going to be about the smallest one we need to care care about, so I'll just click on this to select it. Um, yeah, and this another confusing thing about this panel is there are kind of two ways of selecting things. Uh, if you just click on the value, that changes the values you're displaying and editing, and if you click in the left box, that's uh, selecting or deselecting the polygon in the um, uh, in the normal QGIS sense of selecting a polygon. So for instance, if I click these, you can see they're very obviously visible there. Um, but uh, the two maybe we're interested in here. So this one I've just clicked on, that's like a little island in the middle of a lake there, uh, which is disconnected, and uh, we'll look at which uh, polygon that should really belong to later. Um, but the one below that isn't obviously visible. So now I've selected that. Um, in a kind of QGIS sense, I can uh, use zoom to selection to see where that is and have a look at it. Um, and as you can see, this is basically a tiny sliver between two of the lines. So this tells us that the original line string data for the borders doesn't actually exactly coincide at all the edges. Um, it's pretty close, but uh, when you run polygonize, it you know, doesn't know how to interpret that, and so you get lots of these little sliver polygons between the edges. Um, so, uh, I'll just to show that a bit clearer, I might make this layer transparent so you can see the underlying OpenStreetMap uh, tiles. Okay, um, so uh, I'm going to say that in this instance, I think probably everything of this kind of area and smaller is going to be unimportant to us. Um, I'll just go back to the previous zoom. The zoom last option is actually surprisingly useful, oh, no, but not in this case because I zoomed out by hand a little bit. Uh, yeah, zoom last again and it moves me out again. Um, so if I bring back the attribute table, uh, basically what we decided here is that everything of this side or smaller we can delete. Um, uh, this one is what we do want to keep though. That's the a uh, little island there. Um, so, uh, basically anything which is less than the area of 0 0.003 uh, we want to delete. So, uh, another curiosity about this um, attribute table is that you can control click to select multiple things, but you can't shift click to select loads in a range. Um, so, since there are quite a lot of these, uh, we can select them in a different way um, using this option, select features using an expression. Um, and it has this this, this little kind of uh, interface for building up these expressions, um, which, to be honest, I'm not very familiar with. But um, if you like, if you double click on area there, that loads in. Um, I think these look a little bit like um, SQL where expressions, I think, but um, I wouldn't like to uh, swear to that. Um, so in this case, we make our expression 0.0003 um, and do select. Okay, that looks like it's worked. So it's just the tiny areas that have been selected there. And uh, if I now toggle this edit layer into editing mode, uh, which I can either do from there or uh, the normal ways on here, but I think they're the same. Uh, you can see when you go into editing mode, each vertex is marked with a red cross, which is why it gives the appearance of these uh, red fuzzy boundaries. Um, now that I've toggled into editing mode, this option has become enabled, delete selected features. Um, so I can delete then all the uh, those small areas. So obviously this does create um, a problem that there are 
uh, tiny gaps between some of these areas in some cases. Um, so in other situations I might worry about that much more. In this case however the quality of the boundaries is not so good that I think it's even worth worrying about that. Um, uh, because they do seem to be even be a little bit misaligned if you um, look in various cases um, on top of the OpenStreetMap tiles. Um, so uh, in the interest of kind of expediency, um, I wasn't worrying too much about either of those things um, because it will work in the, the vast majority of the cases. Um, but you know, if you're being really careful, you would want to go back and do that. Okay, so um, at this stage, it looks like we have a reasonable um, selection of polygons um, and. Uh, probably the next thing I would want to do is to uh, check some of these cases which we've had as being a bit, uh, which, you, which you might notice are a bit strange and try and correct them. Um, so I'll close the attribute table for the moment. Um, so to check this out um, I have a kind of a source of uh, ground truth if you like for these uh, uh, this data. Uh, this uh, map of the uh, various regions of Byron that we're looking at. Uh, in this case we're looking at Ober Byron, which is this region here. Um, so two things to point out. One is that if we uh, zoom in, you can probably see that in Munich, in the middle, there uh, are actually multiple different regions within uh, this central region here, but in the polygons we have, if I select this, um, we just have a single region for Munich there. So um, uh, this is actually for us uh, in a different data set. Um, I might just load that just to show you that we do have that data. Um, okay, so you can probably see there uh, that there is... Oops. One of the other shapefiles does have the internal boundaries uh, for Munich, but they're not in this data set. Uh, note again that these don't exactly match up at the edges, which is um, annoying, but um, one of the problems with getting uh, data from kind of random sources. Um, okay, so I'll remove that layer again. Uh, but basically that means that when we deal with the, the, the Munich region individually, then that will supply the polygons in there, so it's not useful having this polygon. Um, so we're still in editing mode, um, and I can use select feature to select uh, Munich. Oh, again, need to make sure that's the active layer in order to select it. And then if I just press delete on the keyboard, that removes the Munich polygon. polygon. Um, the other thing I want to take a quick look at was, uh, do you remember there was a little island um, uh, in this region? Okay, uh, so it seems very likely this um, island is not a, a uh, a region in its own right, but is actually part of either this one or this one. Um, so, again, note this kind of these boundaries are not perfect. Like this island isn't completely described, but um, that's what it goes. Um, so, the area on the left um, and the area on the right, uh, neither of them have IDs yet. Um, but uh, let's look on the the other map I had just to see which of these regions it should belong to. Okay, uh, so if you can make this out, uh, this region here, the one called 129, um, is uh, that region kind of around there, uh, and the one to the west of it, 126, is this region here. And so our island uh, that we're worrying about is this one here, and that has 126 written on it, so it's clearly um, in Rosenheim Ost, it turns out this region is called. Um, so, oh yeah, you can see it if you zoom in a bit more on this map. So it's sort of Rosenheim Ost rather than Traunstein. Uh, so going back to QGIS, um, if I select both of these features uh, by clicking in one and control clicking in the other, um, <coughs> in this uh, toolbar, which one is that? The Advanced Digitizing Toolbar. Uh, there is a merge selected features option. So if I click that, it brings up this uh, dialog which uh, asks you basically how to merge the attributes of those features. Uh, we don't um, really care about this in this instance, we're not going to use the um, areas, um, but uh, you're not going to use the areas or perimeter values, uh, but you know, you could make sure they were the sum of uh, the two areas above or whatever. Um, so I'll click um, OK there, and that's merged those two now. So 
um, if I select this, it's actually now uh, this feature is now a multi polygon, um, which includes the island. Okay, so um, I think uh, you know I would, I would normally go through a bit more carefully and find if there are any other uh, odd cases uh, like that. Um, just checking by eye mostly, um, but I think this looks uh, pretty good now. Um, so uh, what would I do now? Uh, perhaps toggle off editing. Uh, ah, this is a kind of bug I've come across before. Um, could, could not commit changes to layer polygons from lines. Um, so you click on show more, uh, it gives you this error. One feature not added geometry type is not compatible with the current layer. I think, uh, so I, I, I did read up a bit about this, this uh, error, and it seems like it is a bug, I think, um, where the current layer's type isn't changed to accommodate the multi polygon we created. Um, so, but a workaround for this seems to be to save it um, uh, out as a shape file. Um, so, in this case, um, I'll do just that. Polygons. Um, another thing to check when you're saving a shape file is that for the data we're preparing for our partners in this case, they always want it to be um, WGS84 coordinates. So, uh, I change the CRS, uh, the coordinate reference system, to EPSG4326. WGS84. Uh, so I select that. If I save it, it then that creates a new uh, layer, this one here, but um, that will have saved it correctly. Um, so we can get rid of the um, the old polygon some lines layer. Um, okay, uh, so I think that's about it for this um, screencast. I haven't discussed uh, how we um, uh, how we set the IDs on these areas, but I'm going to do that in a separate uh, little screencast. So uh, I hope that's been of some use.